affected in the circumstances of our lives, but he affects every circumstance we go through. Lord, uh, brother, do you believe God's interested in every little thing? If it's interested in you, it's interested in God. Amen. Someone asked me one time, Preacher, do you believe it's all right to pray for my dog? Her dog was having trouble. I said, do you love that dog? Yes. I said, well, if you're interested in that dog, God's interested in that dog. Preacher, don't get so melodramatic here. We don't want to go that far with our faith. You get out of that frame of mind. Your faith touches any area of your life and God touches any area of your life that touches you. Now, I'm not going to form a healing line for dogs. <laughs> but I will tell you, I prayed for dogs. And I will again. i got to go on. You see, His omnipotent gives Him the power to create. And the Bible tells us in Genesis 1, verses 1 through 3, it talks about the beginnings of the heavens and the earth and the creation of God. This same power that created the heavens and the earth said to Israel, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. These are intimate words from God. I've got to move on. Let's go to the second point. That will give me six minutes to cover point two and point three <laughs> before Brother Thomas runs over me get into the chicken pastry. <laughs> Number two, God covers and circles us. Now I want you to think for just a moment. You may be sitting so near to someone this morning that your shoulder or your elbows are rubbing. But God covers you. He knows how to get right in between you and that other person and covers you and not only that, when you begin to move, He circles you like an invisible circle. And wherever you go, He's right there in that circle with you. And you can be aware of His presence at all times. And your awareness of Him helps you to know everything's going to be alright. Everything's going to be alright. Look at verses 2 and 3 if you want some scripture for this in Isaiah 43. He said, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee through the rivers. They shall not overthrow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, they shall not be burned. Thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. He said, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Yes. And then notice what he said. Thy Savior. Yes. Nothing says it better than the Word of God is. Amen. Get the best preacher there is. Nothing says it better than the Word of God. And then verse 2, notice again. He didn't say if you pass through the waters, if you walk through the fire. He said when, when, when you do it. You're going to go through it. Everybody's going to go through it one time or another. Even Peter had sense enough to know that. Now Peter, it took a little time, some hard times for him to learn things. But when he did, he had some choice words to say. He said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which ye shall be tried with, as though some strange thing had happened to you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, and when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And then listen to what the great apostle Paul said. He said, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. You will go through the fire. I've gone through them. You'll go through them. I'll go through some more if I live. But He's got me covered. He's got me circled. But God is present in our pain. He's present in our pain, our plans. He has a plan for us. So if you're aware of His presence, you're okay. But listen to what God said through Jeremiah, chapter 29, you're familiar with it, and verse 11. It's a great promise for us. 
He said, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then there's another version, New King James Version. He said, For I know the plans that I have for you, plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Yes. Yes. We can't get trapped in the past. Say it again with me. Don't look back. You are not going that way. Don't get trapped in the past. If you want to, you can go back to some terrible experience you've had and you can live in that experience the rest of your life. But it'd be miserable living. And not only that, it'll make everybody around you miserable because you're going to spill over on them. You're going to, you're going to have more excuses to get away from them than you've ever imagined. We don't like to live in misery. So don't look back. You're not going that way. We can't get trapped in the past. Verses 16 and 17 tells us to remember that what He has done in the past for His people, but just don't get trapped in that. Verse 18 said, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He is talking to a people. Now listen. For whom everything was in the past. They could not address the future. They could only talk about the past. Also, everything God had done for them was in the past. Everything. And everything God had promised was in the past. Now get a picture of that because that's where you are today. That's where I am. Everything that God has done for me is in the past. Everything about the promises of God that He made to me are in the past. Preacher, what are you going to do? I'm not going to live in the past. My God is a God of the future. Amen. He's a God of the day. He's a God of the future. He's given me blessings in the past. I can look back and use His stepping stones and I can give glory to Him, but I shall not get bound in the past. I will not get trapped with the past. I'll keep looking for a better day tomorrow. Amen. The point is obvious. You don't go through life looking in the rearview mirror. You'll be like the little boy said his mama was. You'll hit the utility pole. And nobody wants you to drive like that. I was with a man by the name of Samuel Chan. Some of you may have remembered him. He's still alive and he's a great uh, leader now in church growth and consultant for big mega churches. And I was riding with him one day in the back of his Lincoln Continental and he had two more with us and he was so excited he was going to show us something at the school where he was and we were going on the bypass around Atlanta, Georgia and Sam was driving 80 miles an hour. I kid you not, I'm not exaggerating. And his eyes were in the back seat while he was driving. And I'm sitting back there saying, Near my God to thee I come. <laughs> and when he did stop, I talked to him. I gave him some godly, excited, intelligent, I mean what I say, cancel. <laughs> When we went back, brother, he drove slower. And he kept his eyes in the front. You don't drive with your eyes in the back. You drive forward. You go forward by looking forward. And God says, don't get trapped in the past. Don't live in the past. Don't look back. You're not going that way. Amen. You see, it's easier for us. I've got to have another minute or two. It's easier for us to live in an illusionary world. We've made the past, we've made it something so special that we keep wanting to go back there and get with it. I, 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 we, we hear people say, I just love to go back to the good old days. I remember the good old days. 
I'm old enough, I remember some of them. And my mom and daddy told me about some good old days that were worse than my good old days. <laughs> they told me about when they didn't have anything but a piece of bread to eat and water. But I remember when I didn't have money to put fuel oil in a tank to burn and keep my children warm. I can remember, and you call them, to, you want me to go back there? No. I remember when at church you'd have the window raised and a stick under the window. Didn't even have a screen. And mosquitoes would eat you up at night. You call that the good old days? I remember the pop belly stove that would get so hot that if you were close to them, you would be half baked and you'd have to turn and bake the other side. And somebody living further off wouldn't get warm. <laughs> Those are the good old days. It's an illusionary thought of your mind. They were never good. People were struggling and praying and saving and scrapping to get out of them. And God said, I've brought you from Egypt through the Red Sea. I'm having too much fun in this thing. I've brought you all this way. He said, don't look back. You're not going that way. Can you say it? Don't look back. You're not going that way. Now, why shouldn't we look back? We, we don't want to immortalize the past and idolize the past and eulogize the past. And it's unrealistic. We make unrealistic standards about the past. God's just as big today. He's doing just as much today as He ever did in the past. So don't look back. If you look back and remember just the good things, you're going to miss what's happening today. Listen, brother Mark, I've got, I've got to just meddle a little bit. I'm superintendent for 20 years. I can tell you one story after another of churches that somebody in there was so tied to the past they couldn't let the church go forward. I asked one brother that was bulging at the seams and his attendance, I was doing revival for him, and, and the place was full it was back in revival days and I said to him brother why don't you all build a new sanctuary he said come with me he carried me to the front door he said see that oak tree my great granddaddy planted that oak tree and if we extend this sanctuary we'll have to cut that oak tree down Do you mean something like that kept them from it kept them from building? And just as much things and just as much silly stuff has stopped a lot of churches from growing because people are idolizing the past, they're making it a memorial, and they're refusing to go forward. And God is saying, Come on across the sea. Get over here on this land. The promised land is ahead of you. Amen. Glory to for one bowl of chicken pastry, I'd preach again. <laughs> if you get hung up on the past, it'll keep you from the new that God wants to give you now. And what was it Jesus said? He said, uh, he said I'm here at this wedding and the wine I'm drinking that uh, uh, not Jesus, but the other said, this wine is better than first. Yes. Jesus had created it. It was a new wine. It was yes. better. Hallelujah. God's going to give you something better. You see, God's not stuck or limited in an old paradigm. He is not in a little box passed down from our forefathers. Amen. He is presently working in you and me in this world for today's solution and I want to tell you I believe with all my heart the best is yet to come for the goals for Pentecostal Free World Baptist Church and for you that will let it be it's the best to come for you as an individual Amen. Oh, that was good preaching that didn't come from TV our last point 
I've abused my time. I strongly suspect I'll not be invited back next year for home guns. <laughs> Number three, God comforts us. And He wants, just remember this, God's always on the move and He wants to keep us up with Him. I'm going to stroll on up. I know some of you are wanting to get a hold of this iPad. Just remember, what God's really telling us in His Word is, the best is yet to come. Don't live in the past. The best, God has saved the best. It's yet to come. And I'm just going to close there. God created us for newness every day. Newness every day. That is springing forth even now. Notice what he said. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? You're going to see it. God's going to do something special. I refuse to live in the past. And I plan to live in the future and get everything out of it I can. I'm going to wring every ounce out of it I can and enjoy it. Because there used to be a song, you all may have sung it, I'm on my way to Cain's land. I'm not going to look back. Won't you come and go with me? To my father's house. Where there's peace, peace, peace. Oh, if I could sing, I'd sing some, but I can't sing. Especially after preaching and screaming like I have this morning. Brother Wendell, will you come to this instrument? I've held you over this morning, but you don't have to beat anybody to a restaurant. You've only got to beat Mark to the chicken pastry. That's all. That's all. That's all. And I'll hold him back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but listen, I've had humor. I've held your attention. But God's Word has gone out. You remember the message? Don't look back. You are not going that way. Now what is it in your life that's binding you right now? Is there sin that in you? <coughs> Is it a conflict with a family member? 67 year old man sit with me this week and wept because the middle brother, the one between him and his oldest has torn their family apart and he said, Preacher he If it's physical healing you need, if it's a miracle within your family, don't look back. God's creating something new all the time. It's being unveiled and revealed. And He's making a way through where? The wilderness. It's about that's been so attentive and so patient. Now, Lord, there's someone here that has a special need. It may be a need for salvation. It may be a need for a deliverance from addiction. It may be, Lord, a need for a deliverance from hatred or envy. It may be bitterness. They can't turn loose. Lord, it may just be a bad experience. They can't get past you. I want you to heal them this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I want you to let them know that you created them. You care about what's happening in their life. I want you to let them know by the Holy Spirit you cover them and you circle their life and you'll walk with them through whatever they go through. I want you to help them to know that you will comfort them them in step with you for a bright and wonderful future. Now in Jesus' name we commit the hearts of your people to you in this prayer. 
And amen. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just a moment. If you're unsaved this morning, I still believe in an old-fashioned altar time. I believe in letting people pray with you to get saved and giving you guidance and direction and instructions on how to come to Christ. If you're unsaved and you want to get rid of those sins and be delivered and detached from them, this minute would you raise your hand and then take your hand down. Is there one? Is there one? Anywhere? Is there one anywhere? Now I'm going to ask you another personal question. I'll not ask you what it is. No one else will bother you with that, but I want to know if you're bound by something in the past and some struggle you're going with, or it may be a physical problem, it may be an economic problem, uh, work-related, or it might be family, but you want a miracle in your life, the best yet to come. Would you just raise your hand? Yes, 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 yes. Hands are going up. Now listen, let me tell you something that will not amaze you. We're all in that category. We've got things we need God to help us with that make our future brighter. Now how many of you of the Goldsboro Church want the coming years to be the best years ever in the history of this church? Will you raise your hand? Stand with me right now. Stand with me now. Pastor Mark, will you come join me on the pulpit? At the end of this prayer, I'm going to be praying with you. At the end of this prayer, Pastor Mark will take the service. Thank you again for being so patient with me and letting me come. Father, there's hands that have been raised this morning. People are wrestling and struggling with issues. They do not know the answer. They have no solution. But Lord, by faith, they raised their hand acknowledging they need help. I want you, Lord, to work a miracle in the lives of your people today. Every hand that was raised, I want you to visit that individual through the Holy Spirit and make a way in their life.